Okay, so like I was telling you before we got started, I'm Michael, the owner and founder of Loudwater Outfitters. I uh, specialize in missing persons and cold cases. Really do anything we can to help anybody that comes to us. Um, obviously, I know I had covered a couple stories that were in that general area to you, and then you had saw some of those, I guess, or somebody had tagged you in it. So with that being said, I'm going to let turn it over to you so you can get your story out there. I'm not going to interrupt you or anything unless I hear something, like, and I've got to follow up on the exact moment. But uh, I'm just going to let you start talking, then I'll see how we can't get you helped out, okay? Okay, I'm sorry. No, you're um, fine. I'm Mary Knowles. I'm from Charlotte, South Carolina, and most everything there happened in Marble County that we know of. My husband lived in Marble County. We were separated at the time that he went missing. We had been married for 14 years. And he just kind of went down a bad road, drugs, and we separated, and he just got in with a really, really wrong crowd. I honestly, I didn't even know he was missing probably two months before, after he was missing, because I just, I mean, he just got in with a bad crowd, and... I know he was last seen getting into a car with two guys. Mm -hmm. And both of those guys have been overheard admitting that they've done something with him. Both of them, as soon as he went missing, were in and out of his house, stealing everything and anything. Just kind of like the police don't care at the moment. Yes, ma'am. So when when so when was he reported missing? How long has he been missing up to this point now? He went missing on September eighteenth. That's the last time anybody'd seen him, anybody had heard from him. What? I did not report him missing until November. I want to say it was November the twentieth, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And what, what year it's was that? Twenty twenty, I'm sorry. No, you're fine. You're fine. It's okay. Take your time. Like I said, we, we got all the time in the world. I just want to make sure some of the things we definitely get out there for you. Um, So kind of walk me through that. I know you said y'all had been separated to this point for about two months. Is that correct? We, no, we separated. We had been separated a complete year when he went missing. Okay. All right. And then. So from the time that he goes missing up until now, just kind of walk me through that. What's been done? What's taking place? Kind of where are we at in the actual investigation on things there? Well, when I went and filed the missing persons report, we first were assigned investigator, and, and he was a younger guy. It was his first case. He literally, within two weeks of him having the case, they kept telling me that they were going to release a press release. It never happens. Then two weeks later, like, he calls me and he's like, hey, do you think you could file a missing persons report in Chesterfield County? Because mm -hmm. you lived in Chesterfield. I lived in Chesterfield County at the time. Okay. And I was like, first I was like confused because I was like, well, this doesn't make sense. Why? And he's like, it's just two heads are better than one. You know, he lived in Chesterville County with you. He went to your house and I was like, okay, you know, I'll do it. So the next day I went and filed a missing persons report in Chesterville County. And the guy, and I mean, I even asked him, I was like, does this mean that you're not looking into it? No, he just kept on. No, two heads are better than one, which... Even when I told the Chesterfield County guy, like, they were kind of like, well, why are you here if you already filed one in Marble County? Mm -hmm. And I told him, I was like, I explained to him what he said. And he was like, well, yeah, that makes sense. He's like, you know, and I filed a missing person report in Chesterfield County also. Maybe a week later to, like, just ask, you know, has there been any updates, anything's happened? And he's like, no, ma'am, you filed a missing report with Chesterfield County. It's their case now. Mm. And I'm just like, it, he said, my, I'm closed. My case is closed on this end. I ended up making a Facebook post about the situation. 
mm-hmm. and messaged me. Ended up being, I guess, his boss. And he met up with me the next day and he promised me, he said, we're on it. This case is not closed. Da, da, da. I don't know. He kept on and he was a young investigator. Like, I don't know why he would tell you the case was closed, but the case is definitely not closed. Da, 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 da. Whatever. And then. And then we found out that the last two people were with him. I gave all that information over. One of them at the time was an inmate in Chesterfield County. Mm -hmm. And I let Andrew Cook know, I'm like, hey, you know, one of the people that was last with James is in Chesterfield County. Maybe you want to go interview him. Something. And the next time I checked up on it, he said, yeah, I went to go interview him. It was a few weeks later. He was already released. Like, I mean, to this day, like, I'm still not really sure who's been interviewed, who hasn't, because one minute they say that they've interviewed them, but you ask them, no, they've never talked to the police. So, and I just, I didn't mean to, I didn't no you're fine. Uh, I didn't mean to cut you off. But so I guess my first question was so you were instructed to file the missing persons report in another county as well. Yes. And what was the I mean was there any ties did he have an address in that county? How far how far apart were those two counties? They're we were... neighboring counties. No, mm-hmm. they are. They're neighboring counties. We okay. now, when we lived together, we lived in Chesterfield County, but okay. he well, there, went missing from Marble County. He lived in Marble County. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's the reason I asked because prior to doing this or getting out of it, I did 10 years in law enforcement in South Carolina and I was in, uh, well, I was a narcotics investigator. Um, but I, that was one of my, that was why I was trying to figure out how exactly did that work out? Cause normally or how it works in the area that I'm located in, whatever area that you live in, that's where you get reported missing out of, right? So depending on if you're in, in Anderson, Greenville, uh, Pickens, anywhere, if, like if you reside in that area, you go missing from that area, then that's the sheriff's office or police department that uh, you end up filing those reports for. So that, that was kind of confusing to me. So, I mean, I get what they're saying as far as two heads being better than one, but I don't know. So there's a million questions I have on that. Now, how long did it take him to have him entered into NCIC, like the national database for missing and stuff? Um, he did not get entered into that until March the next year. Was the okay? So my question to that is, so the way that that works, and I'm and I'm sure I know that you probably are aware of all of this. I'm just explaining it to people that maybe they this first time coming through or anything like that. So NCIC, so you go missing, all your pertinent information gets entered into to that. Your full name, um, height, weight, hair color, eye color, social security number. That way, if somebody, say you go basically run off to Texas or any state in the country, right, or really anywhere, and you get pulled over, you have some sort of encounter with law enforcement, they run that, and it comes back in that database, and you're immediately notified that the your status as of that time is missing or wanted, whatever the case may be. Um, so you said that that was there was a pretty big lapse in between the time that he went missing and the time he was entered into NCIC. Yes. Okay. All right. And how, how long did you say that was again? The time frame on that. Which one? The from the time he went missing to the time that he was actually entered into NCIC. How long was that? Um, it was, I want to say it was in March that he was entered, March 2021. Hmm. Did they, they ever explain why that took so long? No. No. Now, as far as. By the time. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. You're fine. And feel free to cut me off at any time, right? Um, now was what was the initial reaction once he was finally reported missing like what was there searches done was there follow-ups done you said there was an issue with getting a press release out just to bring awareness to him missing in general how long did that take they let me 
I'm trying to open up my other phone. It has a timeline of everything. Okay. With the actual dates. Um, I don't believe they did a search of his home, which is where he went missing until December. Okay. I think December 12th, if I'm not mistaken, mm-hmm. of 2020. They claimed that they had already searched it, but he had neighbors and not one person saw anybody search. All right. So once you realize that you started having issues, um, you started having issues as far as really getting information or finding out from whatever investigative division you were working with at the time, have you have you been able to contact anybody else? Has any news media picked it up? Has uh, Have you been in touch with anybody from the governor's office or have you well because one of the things that i was going to recommend was if obviously it's an active investigation as far as missing persons so some of them may say since it's active investigation they can't do anything about it but whatever your congressman or whoever your congressman is for that district doesn't even necessarily have to be for that district if you can reach out to them and they have constituents that their sole purpose is to help the people that elected them right it, regardless of if you oh, i worded that wrong regardless of if you elect them or not they're still public officials that were elected into that so they that that's their duty to help and assist in that way have you been able to get in contact with anybody like that or i have not no i honestly have not even thought to do something like that yeah and and again the the reason I mentioned that is because it has helped people in the past or different cases that I've worked with as far as getting them the information because if people don't know about it, it's hard. I mean, because I'll be honest with you, from the way it sounds, there's not been very much publicity done on the case at all in order to raise awareness on that. None. None. And, okay, I got my timeline pulled up. Okay. And... They did the first search in, it looks like it was December 29th. And on the 28th, they arrested one of the people that he got into the car with. Mm -hmm. They arrested him because he was, they set him up. He was selling James's belongings on Facebook. Okay. Well, they had warrants against him. I want to say for child support, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. So they picked him up while he was trying to sell James's things. And then the next day they did a search of James's camper and where he lived and everything. They mm-hmm. said they found some weird things, but they never told me what they found. Okay. And then January 7th is they polygraphed him. The okay. guy that they arrested. Mm-hmm. Now, up to this point, he'd been in contact with me, the investigator, and he let me know that, you know, hey, I'm taking him in for a polygraph. I'll let you know how it goes. Well, the day just kind of goes on longer and longer, and I don't hear anything from him. So I've texted him, called him, nothing. All of it goes to just either voicemail or nothing. Nothing's getting answered. Mm hmm. So later on, I end up texting. He finally lets me know that all they'll ever tell me about the polygraph is that the guy lied, and that's it. The guy admitted himself that he failed the polygraph. Mm -hmm. But they've never told me anything. And then when I ask what he lied about, they tell me, oh, well, it wasn't even about James. I'm like, well, he was polygraphed about James, so how was it not about James? Mm -hmm. And they just tell me, well, he lied about everything. So... But the guy said that he was with James that night and that he had dropped James off at a drug dealer's house. Mm -hmm. So, but then, and an investigator and he was completely let go of after that. So I don't know what happened at the polygraph, but I feel like something clearly did. Yeah, I mean, obviously you know and and again i know as much as i would love to be able to tell you like there's a way to find out there's gonna be like unfortunately most of the stuff that they do find out if they're not sharing or being forthcoming with you um not necessarily lying but they're just not keeping you in the loop on anything 
they're always going to revert back to it's an active investigation, right? Or it's an open investigation. That seems to be the go-to. And I understand that on some ends. But at the same time, it's missing person. Um, not only is it just a missing person, but at the time, even though y'all were separated, it was your husband. Y'all do have children together, correct? Yes. You know, so, that, I mean, I, I get there's certain things that they have to do, but they also, their number one priority is serving the public, right? And at least keeping you informed as to what's going on. And not not to really go off on a tangent here, but that seems to be the issue. There are some jam-up police departments all across the country, right? But there are also some that, you know, if it was a one-off thing to where I talked to one family and they were saying, you know, they've done everything they can, they've kept us in the loop. But unfortunately, that's not the case a majority of the time. Like, yes, there are good investigators out there. There are good police out there. But then some of them, it's just – it's it becomes more of an ego thing. And sometimes they, maybe they don't have the training, maybe they don't have the drive, maybe, whatever the case is. Right. But at the end of the day, the only person that suffers from that is the families of these missing individuals. And I hear it more often than not all across the country. And that's, that's why I really, number one, like I said, as prior law enforcement, I'm not sitting here saying, I have no idea what I'm talking about. I did it. I lived it. I breathed it. That was a full-time job for 10 years. And then to turn around and hear these things, it's like that, you know, that, that's kind of one of the reasons that led me to getting out to, to trying to help these or to help families such as yourself. And we've had great success, whether it's been me doing a search, whether it's me be sharing a story, you know, there's families all over the world really at this point that have saw some of these things and reached out or another family has known something and uh, helped another one. And they've gotten answers that way. So that's really all that I care about. But at the same time, it's also like there's certain things that have to be done. You know, once a person's reported missing, you know, obviously, I understand y'all were separated, so you didn't know, but there's this misconception that people have to wait at least 24 hours, 48, 72 hours a week, whatever. You know, I've heard all kinds of different time frames, but as soon as somebody is known to be missing, the best thing to do is report them missing. And as soon as they get reported missing, when they do the report, they should be entered into NCIC because I can't tell you how many times personally I would take a report for somebody missing, and then you'd have a neighboring jurisdiction or somebody – within that your own department stop them in a car stop them on the sidewalk or they get admitted yeah. into a hospital or something you know and you find out that information that way but to just tell you basically yeah we've done some things we've looked into things but i mean you're going on almost two years now right three we're going on three now three years yeah sorry i was but uh you know and you you don't really know any more now than what you did the day you discovered that he was missing, correct? I mean, as far as not what you've done for on your own, right? Like the yeah. information you found out, but like from law enforcement telling you things, you don't—they've not shared with you anything more. So now, I haven't. I think the law enforcement have probably found out way more from me than they've found. It honestly feels like they haven't looked into it at all. Mm -hmm. I mean. I have evidence right now that they just haven't picked up that I've had since January. Mm -hmm. And they're aware I have it. Yeah. So, and that, so this is, this is one of the reasons I utilize social media. So there are people within our followers and people that I follow as well that watch all these interviews and people that I work with, um, whether it be behind the scenes or in the open, that if I don't have a resource, like, yes, I have an extreme knowledge base about the way things work and i i can go out and do searches and things like that but there's also people that i work with that have access to things that i just do not have and it's not because it's monetary type stuff but just relationships i mean there's people that work with like federal agencies that are willing you know there's people that sit in there's active law enforcement investigators and uh, they see things like this and I, I can go ahead and assure you that somebody will be reaching out to you with that right um i'm not i'm, I'm sort of hoping on because i'm I'm honestly terrified. Like I'm telling you that like, I haven't told anybody everything that has happened and mm -hmm. I'm terrified of what the repercussions are also of that, you know, yeah. it's been, it's been a lot, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's, I don't understand, you know, not again, not just with you, but there's so many families that are going through this. And like I said, it makes it even worse that you'll have children together. And I'm not trying to put your personal business out there at all, but 
y'all do. I mean, this wasn't just a husband, even if y'all were separated at the time. It's still a father. It's my son. It's my dad. Uh, people care about this individual. And to just up and completely kind of say, oh, well. And, and another thing, too, that, you know, a lot of people kind of worry about reaching out to because they have a history with something, right? Whether it be drug issues, theft, whatever the case may be, they, you know, they start to kind of think, okay, well, their case isn't going to get looked into, into because it's not as important as somebody else. And I just, I've made that perfectly clear that anybody that comes to me, I will help them without a shadow of doubt um, in any way that I can. Now, I just, again, I could go on for hours how I don't think it's right. I don't agree with it. Um, obviously, you're the one that's having to deal with everything, right? Uh, you've been dealing with this for, like you said, almost three years, and you've not gotten any kind of help whatsoever. And if you have, if they're working on something, they haven't even really filled you in on that to give you some sort of even hope, right? Like, I mean, at a certain point, this turns into more like you've got to, really be faith-based off of it and keep that hope alive. And if you're not hearing anything, it makes it that much harder to go on day by day. Yeah. So how, no, let me ask you that then. So just for the people that are watching this, that can, and again, until you get put in this position, nobody understands it, but like the families that have been through this, like how, how do you cope with it? How, have, how have you been keep going on? I mean, it's had to be an absolute nightmare for you, correct? It's just, we have babies together, you know, you, you have to for them, but it's just, it's awful because what do you tell them? Mm -hmm. I mean, at this point, we know James isn't alive. Like, we know that. But how do you tell your children that their dad's not alive when you don't even have proof, you know? Mm -hmm. Lots of therapy. I think that's how we deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so well, let me ask you this then out of what, what is it that me and my organization or somebody else listening to this, what, what is the biggest thing that we could help you do? Cause obviously I understand you, you say that you've got all kinds of information. I believe that hundred percent. I believe that you've done most of the groundwork. You probably know, I mean, well, there's no, probably you do know the ins and outs of any possible person you think was involved in this, what their story is, what you think happened. Um, what, how, how can we help you? I don't even know anymore. I mean, I just kind of lost. No. So obviously the, the, the huge benefit about these interviews is getting your story out there so that it brings attention to it. Right. Because I hope nothing more, not, not only like, Oh, look what I did. I think I want to clear that up is clear as possible i don't care if it's something that i do but i do know that by me putting this out that somebody with more resources than me can come in see this and say hey i can do this because there's a ton of people out there i don't i would never charge a dime if anybody ever tells you they're with me they're they're lying because it's me and one other guy if anybody ever tells you that you owe money or something like that that's that's a scam don't listen to that whatsoever because i'll never ask for a dime from anybody but there, that that's my biggest hope is I really hope that not just with yours, but all of these that I do when I put them out there, it's not for me. It's so that I truly want y'all to just millions of people to see this. Right. And that's the power of social media, because I do think that you'll get answers because you, the way I look at it too, is if, if it's been three years and everything's kind of, I don't, I don't want to say swept under the rug, but everything's been kept kind of on the down low about it. And you've not gotten any answers. Well, if you have hundreds of thousands of people, Asking, hey, what's going on with this? What are we doing here? That that's how that spreads, and public perception is everything. And yeah. that you know, so that that's my hope on that. As far as doing searches, I would, like I said, I would be more than willing to help you with that. But at the same time, it's hard to do that when you don't even have like a a base as to what took place. I will ask you this: without without using anybody, any uh, possible suspects or anything, n names or anything. Do you have a pretty good idea as to what you think happened that day or that night? Yes. Okay. All right. Now, if – have you talked to, like, an actual private investigator? I have spoke to, I think, two or three, mm -hmm. and most of them just – they don't want the case. 
James didn't have a phone. James didn't have a car. Mm -hmm. The one that said that he would take the case starting out, it would have been over 10 K. Yeah. Yeah. So the, so without, without putting all the details out here, because this is what I'll do too. I'll make sure that I go back through and that, I'm going to the entire message will get out, but I'll edit it to where any kind of information, because I don't want it to be an issue with you to where they say, oh, well, you said this. Nobody else knew about it. I'll make sure that that does not happen whatsoever. So if it looks clipped up a little bit, it will be. Um, lost my train of thought there. But so from the night that he went missing, you've ta I mean, there's obviously been eyewitnesses or people that were speaking about they were with him, correct? Yes. And they're both are the. All of them are still alive or incarcerated, or you know no. of their locations? No. One's incarcerated and the other is passed. Okay. But you do believe that the two that you're speaking of right now have knowledge as to what took place? Yes. I absolutely 100% believe that they know exactly where James is. Okay. Well, this is this is what I want you to do. Um, so my recommendations for you. I'm going to get this story out because you never know who's going to watch it and be able to offer you help there. I want you to reach out to look or Google whatever district that you live in in South Carolina and find out who the congressman for that district is. Uh, and then they'll have a contact number for you uh, on okay. Google to where you can call. Call them, and then if, whoever answers, that'll be basically like their secretary or assistant, and just tell them like, hey – Explain your situation to them and say, is there any way that you can help me? Nine times out of ten, they're going to say yes. And they'll be like, all right, well, just let me know what we can do, and they'll look into it for you. Because that's the thing. If, and once you get to the sheriff's office level in South Carolina, the sheriff is the highest power in, in that county, right? So if they're not doing anything, ultimately the next step above that would be SLED. And if you hadn't talked to SLED or called down there, I would recommend calling them as well and trying to find out what's going on there. Um, well, I I sent in a complaint to SLED about Marble County, and they told me that they would not accept complaints from the public. Okay. And okay. Marble County says that they asked SLED to step in, and that I never heard from SLED. And then Marble County came back with saying that SLED found everything that they had done to be sufficient. Okay. All right. So – would that be in the case? The next, another thing that I would recommend doing is uh, requesting a copy of the case file, right? Now, again, some of that's going to be redacted just for the simple fact that it is an ongoing case, right? They're not going to have all that information in there. But if you can request copies of both case files, especially the one from Marlboro, because they said it was closed in the beginning and then somehow it was reopened, whatever the case was going on there. So go to go to Marlboro and Chesterfield and, re and request copies of that case file they may give it to you there on the spot if not you'll have to submit what's called a freedom of information act request right and then they have to by law answer that they could say well they're not going to give you portions of it because it's active investigation but they have to give you something at least that way you have somewhat of an idea if anything right it may just be a piece of paper that says this is the date he was reported missing this is what uh, last known, whatever, you know, but at least you have that. That way, once you're ch climbing up this chain here and you start talking to congressmen, senators, whoever you have to talk to, somebody will eventually take interest in this and uh, and try to follow up for you on that. Because unfortunately, once it gets to this point, people in positions of power are the ones that have to get this ball rolling, right? Um, so that that's the route that I would recommend you going there to get somebody to try to step in and look at it that way. But again, there's also tons of people that are going to see this and then follow up on it as well. So I hope and pray to God. And if you're for who's ever listening to this or going to watch this, if you're able to help this family, please step in because I'll, I'll talk and be, mediate with whoever. Right. So that's what I do. This is more of a freedom of speech type thing to get your case out there so people can see it, um, because that without a doubt is what you need. You need somebody to come in and really just bust this case open for you. If you feel as though you've been wrong, I. Um, I don't think that it would be a bad idea to speak with an attorney either. Uh, it, there's Again, there's tons of them that watch this, and hopefully one of them will speak up. But if you just call them, some of them, again, have consultation fees. Some of them don't. But all of this stuff, if it does cost money, they'll work with you on that. 
what I would recommend doing is what I did or recommend to everybody. If you're having troubles with finances, I'm not saying that you are. I'm not getting into your business there. But if you are, I do recommend GoFundMe uh, just because, you know, they do take fees. So some people don't like that. But it is a trusted source and you can go in and set it up for whatever your legal campaign investigation fee. That way you can get a private investigator because – some people, it, it there is a business side to these things, and you know, some sometimes the best does cost money. And if you, we can get that out, and if you can get that GoFundMe started, I'll be more than happy to share that for you. To, that way, people can start getting funds into it, so that you can get the answers that you need. Thank is, you. Is there before we get off here? Is there anything else that you can think of right now? Like I said, so I'm going to be gone. I'm I'm leaving for work tomorrow, and I'll be out of the country for right at about a month and a half but i do have like i said the other guy that'll be here uh, is there anything we could help you with in the meantime or is there anything you want to ask somebody watching this or if they were if somebody is watching this anything you want to tell them i mean i'm sorry it's a cat <laughs> <laughs> um i don't i really don't know i That's just fine. That's fine. And I'm again, I'm I, I'm just hope something can help because it's just it's been so much. And then, I mean, I don't even know, like the Facebook posts and all that. You said you've read them and things mm -hmm. like the next investigator we got, she ended up. I had contacted a company named Help. They are an organization out of North Carolina. That helps with missing people. So I'd contacted them, but in order for them to step in, you have to have the missing report. Mm -hmm. So I went up there, I called them first and asked them for the missing report. When I went up there, they told me they didn't have it. And I'm like, well, you have to have it. Like I'd already spelled my name out because my name's kind of weird. Like mm -hmm. it's a thing. And I'm like, you have to have it. I spelled my name out again. And then like 15 minutes later, the investigator comes out and she's like, here's your report and we need you to polygraph because we found suspicious things on your Facebook. And I'm like, okay, you know, if th this is where we're going to go next, like, that's fine. Like, uh, whatever. I'll polygraph. Never did I get polygraphed. And all of a sudden, and they literally emailed people off my Facebook that left comments on the post telling them how I was a murder suspect, how I plotted his death, and all sorts of information that I they didn't even give me. All mm -hmm. sorts of searches that they claim they did that I know never happened. Yeah. Well, like I said, the, 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 this will definitely, there's going to be more people than just you that know about this side of this, this side of, or the side that what you've been going through, right? So the more people that see it, the better off it's going to be. And that's that's really where I, I believe that you'll start seeing some answers or at least motion taking place on that. Because there's also going to be people that watch this and they have knowledge of it. And whether they reach out to you, me, law enforcement, whoever, I don't care, as long as it ends up ultimately resulting in finding answers for you and your family, right? Um, yeah. So that that's just what I can do. If I hear of anything whatsoever, I'll, re I'll report it to you. I'll send it to law enforcement. I'll send it... Wherever it's got to go, that way it can be done. But I'll definitely keep you in a loop on that, okay? Uh, Thank you. But like I said, heart breaks for you. Be praying for you and your family. Um, and I really do. I hope and pray to God that this does at least help bring awareness to the case because everything that I was trying to check and see, that there just hadn't been that much done on it up until this point. Okay? So if you don't need anything else, I'm going to get off. I'm going to edit this. I'll have it uploaded this evening for you. Is there anything else you can think of right now? No. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And I, like I said, if you need something, you know how to get in contact with me now. So just shoot me a message and I'll get right back to you as soon as possible. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am.